Which is the world's biggest game company? Names like EA, Sony, Activision Blizzard, or Nintendo may come to mind. But it's actually Tencent, the Chinese tech giant behind WeChat. It was through its popular social networks, QQ and WeChat, that Tencent gradually built up its game empire. Now ByteDance, the parent company of short video app TikTok, wants to emulate the path of Tencent to become a major player in the global gaming market. ByteDance first got into gaming in 2018, when it launched a mini-program feature in its news aggregator Toutiao, and mini-games were a major part of these programs. In February 2019, ByteDance released its first self-developed game, named Yinyue Qiu, a mini-game inside of Douyin. In the game, users bounced a ball to a musical beat. Meanwhile, the firm also launched a publishing platform for casual games called Ohio. By January of 2020, ByteDance had already hired over 1,000 employees for its gaming division, with plans to double the number by the end of this year. So why did ByteDance jump into the gaming arena? A major reason is the vast market. In 2019, China was the world's biggest gaming market with $33 billion in revenues. And so far, ByteDance has already grabbed a piece of the pie. According to estimates by GameLook, ByteDance received $2.1 billion from game advertising in 2018, which was around one-third of its total advertising revenue. ByteDance now has two gaming divisions, a casual game unit led by its commercial department, and a mid-to-hardcore game unit led by its strategy department. The company views casual games as their entry point into the gaming market, similar to what Tencent did a few years ago. In 2003, Tencent released a casual game platform called QQ Game when it first entered gaming. Most of the games on the platform were board games and card games, so they were easy to play and very social. By tapping into Tencent's instant messenger QQ, the platform soon gained popularity and acquired a large number of users. ByteDance wants to adopt a similar strategy using Douyin and Toutiao. In 2019, it published several casual games via Ohio. Relying on the huge user base of Douyin and Toutiao, these titles have gone on to achieve quick success, some of them even becoming popular in Japan. So far, Ohio has published over 60 games, making it China's top publisher for casual games. But ByteDance's ambitions aren't limited to just casual games. Following in Tencent's steps, it now aims to develop mid-core and hardcore games. These types of games are able to make more profits than casual games. For example, Honor of Kings, Tencent's hit title, has become the world's top mobile game in revenues, making $1.5 billion in 2019. To create its own hit, ByteDance built up a team called Oasis Project for hardcore games and bought many game studios, including Moquin Technology and Shanghai Internet Technology. In total, ByteDance now owns four studios across Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, and Hangzhou, with former producers from China's biggest game companies, such as Perfect World, 37 Interactive Entertainment, Tencent, and NetEase. As ByteDance moves forward in gaming, it will encounter a more saturated market that is currently dominated by leader Tencent and longtime runner-up NetEase. The two giants combine to take up 70% of the market. Tencent has already thwarted ByteDance's efforts at game live streaming. In 2019, Tencent sued users for streaming Honor of Kings, Crossfire, and League of Legends on ByteDance's apps. All of the titles were published by Tencent. With the competitiveness of the domestic market, overseas might offer more opportunity for ByteDance. With their app TikTok already achieving global popularity, the hope is that their games can do the same. However, having a huge user base and ample capital doesn't always guarantee success in the game world. Success requires long-standing efforts, as well as some luck. Baidu and Alibaba both attempted to enter the market, but have yet to make a big splash. Even Tencent didn't secure its dominant global position until 2015 with the birth of Honor of Kings, and that was after it had already been in the arena for over 10 years. So by taking a page out of Tencent's playbook, can ByteDance become a threat to the giant? This video is part of Beyond TikTok, a series that looks at ByteDance's ambitions to diversify its business. To learn more, hit subscribe and tune in next time or visit creation.com using the link in the description below.